We are two crazies from you South Africa, that's Frick and Pietro. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Pietro has left for New Zealand, so I'm all on my own here. My lodgings for the aunt geweest. Net in bed op gespring, nie, al twee nie. It is a bit in the flu, so there's movies work here. And kijk at these skyscrapers. I can't even get on a lulu like Swanny. I thought that is tiki bars, grass skirts, and coconut bikini tops, and hula goals. And this is the moment I have been waiting for for so long. That's the one downside of sailing is not seeing your loved ones. I haven't seen my daughter for over two years since their wedding day. And my granddaughter since she was born. COVID happened, we couldn't move. And she was already eight months old when I held her for the first time. It's such a bittersweet moment. But thank goodness for... Elon Musk <laughs> with his Starlink. We video chat just about three, four times a week, so I never miss a beat with this sweet little thing. <laughs> so we are off to a tattoo parlor. A lot of you people have asked us what tattoos we have and where we got them and what they look like, so this would be my tattoo number three and I got it as a Christmas present from my kids here in New Zealand so one of the, the traditional tattoos that sailors get is for every 5,000 nautical miles that you do you get one swallow so we've done almost 30,000 so we are actually due to get six swallows but we're gonna start with swallow number one today yes I'm entering the parlor that's Rebecca She's going to do the artwork and this is where it's going to take place. So I'm all on my own here and had to get off the docks very narrow space we were docked Thank you Hans for hosting us for a few days and Sisu is now on her way to get lifted here at Jazz Catamarans. So this is my trusty car <laughs> and because I need to sleep in a hotel or some place like that because Sisu is out the water and we're not allowed to stay on Sisu. These guys, that's now canaries. They put the, the primer over the anti-foul. Don't know why they do that. So everywhere you see like here it's just flaking off. Fix the, the bows you can see here how they put this is now a primer on top of the gel coat but they put this on top of that and now this is flaking off as well even here so that is the original primer and here they put primer on top of both these and and this was now done in the Canaries and I, and I paid for a full layer of primer we had like this part will just be barnacles, barnacles, barnacles 
So when we were in Maine, we had this damage. We hit a rock and that rock was not on any of the charts. And it was like, it's serious. <laughs> but this is a sacrificial keyless, if you can see it like that. So this one, there's no, it's just fiberglass. This whole thing is just solid fiberglass. So there's no, no chance of water coming into, into the hole. You can see, uh, even after the spray, there's still barnacles sticking here. These patches, they are horrible. Here's the thing. <laughs> one time, one of the guys, they said, why do you need a life raft? Because the catamaran, if it capsizes, it will upside down. And when it's upside down, you can just, just basically be here on the hole. And here's the reason. This will get quite a wash with water. Uh, the waves will come over. So you need to hold on things like this. Or, I don't know where. This is only two places. And you only need one small one like this. Only one like this. That will just just straight you up so the job begins while these guys are busy here <laughs> we're also looking at the sail drive and this one looks a little bit it seems like you really have to do the sail drive at least once a year but the problem is we didn't get hold out since the canaries. So the seals are taking a big hammering. I, I will definitely need to find a way of getting the seals getting the seals replaced once a year. So the bob stays. You can see there's some cracks. Because this is holding up the peak, which is also holding up the big sail. So the code D is going that way, it's pushing onto that one that way, and that one is pushing this. But also what happens is the waves will hit here very hard, coming from, from, from that side, coming in, and it hit this side a lot. So if, if the bob stays, uh, and attention, not because of the sail, just because of uh, the bobstay is sitting here, and that side is getting hit quite hard. So you can see. So we're going to strengthen that. I already strengthened it in the canaries, but it was not just not doing the thing that it's supposed to do. So I was thinking of putting a bar on the inside and then glass it in so that there's a big long finger can help with the pressure and the forces that's working on the on the bow so it's all just curtain <laughs> so, and it's hot finally Finally, we are making progress. Take care. Yeah, I'm working his plantation, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want him. If you make money with the video, you have to share, okay? That will be like seven dollars. I can give you now seven dollars. <laughs> I'll show you. This is a half new bottom paint. Looks so smooth and shiny. And also, we put some. Uh, we also clean the prop. We've got new zincs. And also, anti foul on this the SD drive. We are back in the water. But it's a sad, sad day. I had to strip the pics of a nice, colorful clothes because she blew out the last breath gone so we need to get the new tipex so you may ask why what happened to tipex well it's just the glue look at this you can 
you can remove the just like the glue just doesn't work anymore so this is I reckon it's about landfall but the airplanes are still taking off <laughs> the eye of the storm should be somewhere that side doesn't look cool it looks a lot different a few hours later and you got the main lasso tap or the, the sail cover and that's about it this one stayed on I see some of the guys brought their head sails down but most of the guys still have their head sails up so we are busy upgrading the the vanity case it was just useless uh, Peter and I we, we wanted to do this in Cape Town but we never got to that because in Cape Town the guy when we wanted to do it the carpenter was not there <laughs> and when we wanted to to come here I think in May we were here in, in at Fort Lauderdale the carpenter was here but no wood was here so this is the first time we had the carpenter and the wood together at the same place okay looks like the drawers arrived um, and in the other places we want to put this nav station I know you guys want me to do paper charts but I am not doing paper charts so we're also putting in six drawers here so it arrived not sure why where's that one going down or up here okay. ah, so we've got a new nav station and while we're here i put my my video cameras up there on a little network switch but i also have the the Raymarine and now they are flare so I got also these things here for in case this this was not strong enough to give power over Ethernet, and this this wire or this um, cable is coming from the AC, which I draw from this plug here. So it doesn't take any 12 volt away from the instruments, um, while this one was taking 12 volt away from the instruments to power the cameras, and then over here. I replaced our, there was just a sonar, but I replaced the sonar now with a, a, a ultrasonic speed lock. So that one doesn't have a paddle, so the little wheel that's getting clocked up by the little animals and coral reefs that wants to try and build there. So this one is a ultrasonic, it is a depth sounder, it is a speed lock, and it also gives you the temperature of the water. Another thing that I'm working on is basically to to put a, this one as 270 cubic feet I don't know what this means CFM it just means it's a huge inline fan and this you can bring out and I'm going to put this onto the alternators inside the, the, the engine room to get some cool air blown onto the alternators with regards to stainless steel work our uh, life raft is mounted here but this bracket was being was was moving quite a lot especially if Tupix is, is is banging against the life raft so we put something here and it looks it looks pretty okay it looks pretty decent I'm not so happy with the welds I think the guys in South Africa is making a way better weld than this and then something that we wanted to do for a long while um, so we asked the guys to put a line in here but they only had to, they had to weld these things also again the welding is, well, the welding is what it is so uh, this, this line here was below here on this side here but the dive rack is taking that so we just basically wanted to use this line so we just added two little things here and so this is now our like like a like a washing line like these guys here 
and then maybe one final thing we added the pipe here um, that's also welded here and um, this is what Pietro made so Pietro made this so we can put now the cameras in here the binoculars in here the headsets in here the cell phones in here a torch in here I have no idea what that is but anyway it's a it's a nice handy thing that while we're on long passages we can put all the stuff in there and we can keep it there for for when we want to use them because they normally lie somewhere here it's just getting a very big mess the last thing about the stainless steel was that we removed now the the wind jeans the poles but i left a little piece there so that if we need to use it maybe for the starlink then i can still use that one that one is capped off but i can still put a bracket around it if i want to put something like a cell phone booster or a wi-fi booster on there another thing that we upgrading is the alternators the new alternators that is over there you can see the wires somewhere there going to the regulator and the controller over there um, was too thin according to me so we got it rewired it's now much thicker upgraded one size and there's no connections in between so these are the, the alternators and this is the wires that i'm talking about so they one gauge bigger so they mounted it as well inside you cannot just undo this they they mold it inside here so we had to send it into someone that can actually do the wire from inside from inside there then is one continuous wire and this wire just goes into here so no connections in between to the swallow tattoos we're busy having a takeout because we're going to be under the needle soon Frick is getting his six swallows for 30,000 miles and I'm getting five extra I've already got the first one and this is the place that's going to torture us so we went to a bar and we got back to the boat about two o'clock in the morning and we woke up with this six swallows which means each swallow is 5,000 miles we've done 30,000 miles and then it was time for Frick's brother Eben his wife Melanie and their two kids Kayla and Megan to join us we went for provisioning today and that's how the liquor store looks like Here's still stuff that needs to be packed away. Lots of green stuff. And there's even green stuff over there. Here's even green stuff over here. Okay, here's some brown stuff. And this stuff I like, so we still need to pack this away. Oh, red stuff. And then more stuff. And we're also busy putting important stuff. So, and here's some other stuff. It's a lot of stuff for 60 days, six people. I'm sure we're going to work through this. And here we go to the Bahamas again. Sisu has been in for upgrades and repairs. And I went to New Zealand to visit my grandchild and Frick was here to oversee everything. But it's been almost six weeks since we've seen the big ocean. So we are so looking forward to it. And it's a calm, calm, calm day. So I don't think there's going to be much sailing, unfortunately. But the blue water is calling. We're part for Lauderdale. And the captain's got a happy smile on his face. It's 
been six weeks, eh? It's been six weeks since we saw the ocean, the big ocean. Yeah. So it looks like very calm. Kitties is sleeping. They are sleeping. Um, and we have a lot of wind here. And there's a squall coming or going past us now. So it's pretty pretty rough if you think of the the wind. But not much not too much shaking here in the middle of the Gulf Stream. We have the wind opposing the the Gulf Stream. But for us it's still more or less calm, right? The side is the sun and the sunshine of my life. <laughs> so now the sea state is not too bad, but I would not like to be completely beam rich or going into this. So we are lucky that we're going kind of like downstream to towards Bumimi. We are on the reef two. So this is who's on the reef two. The sun is still out. And this one is about to get reefed, but look between the sails over there and look at the sea state. Or oh, not the sea, but the white caps. The white caps on the sea, that means lots of wind is coming. It's, uh, we're actually in the lots of wind now. And the thing is, the wind is coming from the north against the current. So we might have a little bit of issues, but at this moment, the waves is still okay. Uh, it's, not, it's not getting too high yet, so hopefully the squall is fast by the time the waves want to stand up. We are still on the reef too, just under sail, big ship passing us, very nice sunset. But, oh, so, oh, so Miami is now over there, getting, the skyscraper is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so bye bye US. But look at this side. No? Luckily, this one is going to pass us at the back. Yeah. So we are pretty lucky in this one. And the Starlink is still working. So this one passes in the <laughs> on the back and we use that wind because there is no wind for today. We were thinking we are going to motor the whole day. But then these squalls came up and I provided quite nice wind. Bahamas, we've arrived, we have checked in, everything's clear, good to go. So the next step is... Raise the flag. The traditional thing. <laughs> or the etiquette thing to do. Yeah, I'm not sure whether... That's going to change or not. So we arrived here in Bimini, we anchored last night, oh goodness, at about 11 o'clock and this morning, first thing when we woke up, we went to check in and the lady was very upset that we didn't check in straight away. Because they're, they're like at 11 o'clock at night. And apparently their offices take note everybody, in Bimini is open till 11 o'clock at night. No, so apparently <laughs> any time during the night, like I don't yeah. think so but she's the law you don't argue with the law now we've never encountered that so it's normally about four o'clock in the afternoon that these offices close but she insisted and she said it is illegal you can go to jail yeah and we said sorry 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 so even the maritime law you can have, you have two days 